Good George. afternoon to you. How are you today? Well, excellent. How about yourself? Well, we got about 15 minutes. I want you to solve all of the Steelers' problems. Can you do that uh, uh, in <laughs> a 15 or 20? Is that what you said? I just didn't hear that right. In a 15 or 20 minute segment, let's solve all the problems. Obviously, Mark, the worst beatdown in 33 years for the Steelers, 38 to 3 at Buffalo. What do you see when you look at this Steelers team? Well, I think it's almost, and I've been saying this on air, that you almost have to strip away what you know about the Steelers and take away the – it's not the same old Steelers team that you guys have gotten used to for the past however many – your whole lifetimes, really. And, you know, 10 wins is a disappointment or making it in the playoffs is a disappointment. You know, Super Bowl is always the goal. I mean, this is really a team that, in a lot of areas, this is very talent deficient and has put itself in a bad situation over the last few years with – possibly not moving forward and trying to hold on to the glory days and not building the team for, okay, we're in the position we're in now with an old quarterback and we got to, to go forward as opposed to let's just keep trying to build this around him and, and missing a lot, quite frankly, missing a, a lot of evaluations on certain positions, offensive line, you know, DBs, some linebackers. So overall, when I looked at the team in preseason, I thought it was a, a talent deficient team. I thought it was, uh, a very poor decision to think Mitchell Trubisky could be the guy. So I think it all just is coming together now for the Steelers with the disappointment where the expectations or the, the foolish expectations of what they could have been is really the reality of what you should have been looking at. Well, you mentioned Trubisky here, and he made three and a half games, and then he got benched, and, uh, you know, they, they couldn't score points. They've gone to pick it. Uh, I'm eager to hear what you thought of Kenny Pickett on Sunday, even though they didn't get into the end zone. Uh, and where are these problems offensively? Is it the offensive line? The play calling has been widely criticized here with Matt Canada as the offensive coordinator. What do you see when you look at the Steelers' offense and pick it? Yeah, what isn't it? It's not what is it. What isn't it? And Matt Canada has been widely under fire since he's been there, and you know, that can't inspire hope within the team, that every day you hear about, you know, this guy is terrible, let's get him out of here. Uh, then you go with the offensive line is deficient. The receivers really haven't been stepping up, been a disappointment. Uh, you know, the running back has been hurt. So, and then with Kenny Pickett, though, but that was encouraging. Look, that game, they had no chance going into that game no matter what. I didn't think it would, they'd just get completely destroyed like they did. I thought they'd put up some sort of fight. But – at least for Kenny Pickett, he showed signs of he wasn't afraid. He, he came, he, sh he showed the mocks, he showed the toughness, he showed all that, which is why they drafted him in the first round. And really, this season is about getting him, getting the, him developed and the future of this team throughout the season and the next few years. It's not about trying to make the playoffs, certainly not the Super Bowl. It's, it's really about what Kenny Pickett can do. And at least for one game, he should never be judged on that because there's so much more to go. But at least he showed, man, in the face of this complete beatdown that I'm taking, I'm still out here trying to fight, and that would inspire his teammates. Mark, your background is scouting and, and, and a wide background in scouting. What did you think of Pickett coming out of Pitt? He was the only quarterback taken in the first round, 20th overall. A lot of teams desperately needed a quarterback passed on him. What was your evaluation of Pickett coming out of Pitt? Yeah, I liked Kenny Pickett. I liked his, his playmaking that he had. I liked the his production. I liked his toughness, all the things that you see. But as far as talent-wise, I thought he was more of a second-round sort of talent. I did not see him in a normal draft with some top-tier quarterback being a first-round quarterback. So I think at his best, when I when I watched him, that he could be sort of a, if everything goes right for your team, uh, sort of 500 quarterback and then put some pieces around him to elevate him. So th those are the, those, that's how I saw him, you know, and I think that's why you saw this whole draft class last year with those rookies kind of got manufactured in the pre-draft. And I'm part of the two NFL network is like, let's put these quarterbacks on here as much as possible. Let's hype these guys up to get some viewership. And ultimately during the draft day, it, those guys didn't fall. They got taken where they should have gotten taken. Kenny was the only one in the first round. 
I think if it wasn't the Steelers, it wasn't the whole pick connection and all that feel-good story that he may have went out of the first round or, or certainly – lower than he did. So overall, I, I'd see him kind of as a 500 sort of starting quarterback. Now, uh, has, that, has that changed at all through this preseason and his first game and a half in the NFL? No, it's too early. It's way, way too early to tell. Yeah, his first preseason. The preseason, you can't judge. He's playing against guys. He played against guys that are working somewhere else now or out of the league. You know, those third and fourth stringers he was playing against game one. Certainly not the right time to evaluate him off of that performance. But plenty of season left to go. I think it was the right decision for him to get in there. I, should, I would have put him in a couple games earlier because you know, after game one, you kind of saw that Trubisky was the same as he was. So you got a long season to evaluate. I'm sure still fans are hoping he is the answer. Uh, but the rest of the team, I think, is so deficient that it, it'll be a long season for, for there in, in Pittsburgh. We're talking to Mark Ross of the NFL Network, longtime executive in the NFL. Mark, uh, Najee Harris is under some fire here, too. The Steelers, a lot of people don't believe in taking a, a running back in the first round. The Steelers did that last year. Uh, Najee just doesn't look quite the same. And, and the kid they signed as an undrafted free agent, Jalen Warren, actually I think has ran harder. There's t- some talk about maybe giving him some more carries. How, uh, what do you think of the two running backs? Yeah, of course, it's always controversial to take it back in the first. And when they did that last year, last year it was that, as I mentioned, it was trying to hold on to what they had and trying to maximize Ben, even though that's not shown to be the the wise way to do it is by drafting a running back. So, and the injuries, that's the, that's why you don't do it because of the, the lifespan of a, a back and you can get production out of a late round free agent, <laughs> undrafted free agent as you can as a first rounder. And I went to the Steelers camp, this uh, the training camp, and talking to some exec, you know, personnel people there, and on they were fired up about Warren. I mean, they're like, this guy is is, is the truth. So I, I don't think it's a surprise for people within the building, but you know, it's that thing where, okay, are we going to play this guy in the first round? The guy that we take took in the first round just because we took him in the first round, or are we really trying to do what's best for our team and play the young man who's playing better or running harder? Uh, and that's always the hard decisions that coaches have to make. Mark, we had Todd Haley on here after the second or third game. And Todd, you know, a former head coach, offensive coordinator, knows his wide receivers. That's where he made his bones, uh, coaching wide receivers. And he said the Steelers guys are sloppy. Uh, we Deontay Johnson has made spectacular catches and then dropped routine passes. Hasn't been able to do the Tony toe top uh, in the last couple games. And Chase Claypool Really disappointing to me. And then George Pickens looks like the real deal. How about how would you evaluate the three wide receivers? Yeah, I think that kind of sums it up. Where the, you know, especially Deontay and Claypool are up and down, and you know, a lot of coaching you can work out people's weaknesses or inconsistencies. But at a certain point, players just are what they are, and no matter how much coaching you give them. They're going to have their strengths, they're going to have their weaknesses, and they're going to display that in game with Deontay Johnson dropping balls. And you know, if you're just waiting for him to just all of a sudden just catch everything, I, that probably won't happen to him. At this point in his career, you're just going to have to live with a, a spectacular play here and, and drops there or a lack of route running, attention to detail, where you just can't coach it out of him. And Claypool, the same thing. Um, you're holding out hope with Pickens. He still needs to show, certainly needs to show a lot, lot more besides highlight sort of plays. You know, can he step up? You know, it's, easy, it's easier to do those sort of things when you're not the number one. And, okay, now can he really be the main guy, the number one guy? Now you thrust him into that position. It's a whole different story as far as players and what is the expectation and how they can perform. So, all in all, uh, inconsistent guys and then a young guy that still has a lot to prove. Mark, let's turn to the defense and TJ Watt. You know, the Steelers are 0 and 8 when Watt doesn't play. I mean, 0 and 8. Can one guy make that much of a difference? I can't imagine that he should, but I mean, we've seen Cam Hayward's game drop off without TJ Watt. It seems like literally they can't win without him. Yeah. And that's the, I compared TJ Watt and I said it about Derrick Henry as well, where, those are kind of the, the two players with their Henry in his prime the last few years that they, they, they are 
to their teams what franchise the Mahomes and Brady's were to their teams as far as franchise quarterbacks, and they were the only two players that kind of had that impact, not only with their production and their presence, but the the confidence level and the mindset of the whole rest of the team where they just raise everybody's level. And, and that's what Mahomes sort of quarterbacks do, Brady's do. They raise everyone else's level because of the attention that they take up, but also the confidence level that they give everybody else. And that's what TJ does for that Steelers defense where uh, he's, he's the MVP of the team no matter what. And, okay, he goes out and it's almost a deflating thing. Of course you're not going to replicate his production and impact as a player, but you should be able to sort of replicate the confidence level a little bit of, all right, this guy's out of here. We're 0 and 7 since he doesn't play 0 and 8 now. Let's rally and let's, you know, let, let's get together and overcome this at least for one game. And for that to ha- them not even win one game when he's out, you know, that's a failure of the, the, the coaching and, and the other players that kind of rally to succeed. Mark, how bad can it get here? Can they, you know, I see the ESPN's power index said they're the likeliest team to get the number one overall pick i think a lot of the power rankings have them 29th 30th how bad can it get it's one and four now are we looking at a potential three and 14 four and 13 something like that yeah i I think so i didn't have high hopes for coming into the season for this team i thought they would be you know six seven win team at at best uh, but uh, you know at the very best and that was if tj played in the defense just completely dominated to win games, but when you just look at their schedule, there's not a whole lot of winnable games where you, I, I don't think they'll be favored to go into a lot of games this year. They got the Panthers at, the, at over there, and of course, fluky things happen in the league. Got the Colts, so there are a few winnable games, but for the most part, you're looking at man, maybe four or five wins for this team at the very best. Oh. That's not what uh, I I told you. I gave you 15 or 20 minutes to solve the problems. That's not what they want to hear here. You know that, don't you? Yeah, well, well, that's what you got to be realistic of what you're really. You have to have self-awareness in this league and look at where you are and where your organization is and what you really need to do to get better. And, uh, you know, holding out hope that (laughs) we can go, hey, uh, the Steelers fans, maybe they will go in there and turn around and Kenny Pickett will be the second coming starting with this game uh, this weekend uh, against against Tom Brady. What better way to do it now? Um, but, you know, just realistically, when I just look at the overall talent level and now you're trying to go with a rookie quarterback and the dysfunction and the inconsistencies, there's just not a ton of positives that I'm looking at right now with the Steelers.